Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We have some great shows coming up for you, including separate shows on updates on all the major commercial real estate sectors. Don't miss a show of special interest to you. Sign up for a once-a-week email announcing the show topic at commercialrealestateshow.com. Well, today our show is called Sustainability for Health and Profit. Please welcome my next guest, Paula McAvoy, Associate Principal with Perkins and Will. As co-director of the Firmwide Sustainable Design Initiative, SDI, she assures that sustainable ideas are a huge part of the firm's projects and practices. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks. I'm happy to be here. Well, we appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I love this website that you guys have created. It's called transparency.perkinswill.com. And to, to get our listeners and, and viewers some knowledge about this site and the power and the things they could do with it. First, tell us about the precautionary principle and also about transparency as it relates to this site. The, the precautionary principle is actually what started the whole site and started the whole um, effort for Perkins and Will to start looking at materials more closely. So it came from an organization that met in 1998 and tried to figure out how to address important environmental issues like detrimental environmental issues, health impacts, and things like that. And then realized that even though there wasn't enough scientific evidence to, to fully establish a cause and effect relationship, things still should be done. So if you take a precautionary approach to it, you know, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Mm -hmm. So use common sense and, and take that approach to when you're making decisions. For example, if you are shopping, and I know this was a big effort a few years ago, if you're shopping for a baby bottle and the science says, well, plastic. I'm always looking for that. Yeah, a lot of people are. <laughs> plastic might be good, plastic yeah. might not be good, you know. How do you know which one to get? So if you get a plastic bottle that's supposed to be safe, and then it turns out the science is bad science, then you're safe. But if you get one and it's, the science is right, then you're not safe. So we try to look at materials like that. If it seems like it's an unhealthy material, why not find something better? And the transparency part of the site, that's where that comes in, is just letting everybody know, right? Let it, let's get it all out there. You would be amazed at how many people don't know what's in the products that they're specifying or that they're buying themselves. And a lot of times, I mean, it seems obvious you would want to buy healthy materials, but a lot of times even the manufacturers don't know what's in the materials. Okay, and tell us about the, fame, the, the main four sections or lists that are available at the site. So it started off as, as the precautionary list, which was a list of 25 materials that were found in building products, so 25 substances. And we said these are the most prolific and they're the ones that can do the most harm for the environment and for human health, and we don't want to use them anymore. So here's a list of 25. And then a couple of years ago we expanded that because there were other environmental factors that architects and designers were having control over. For instance, asthma triggers and asthmagens. And now we're hearing a lot of information about flame retardants and health impacts caused by flame retardants. And then finally, there's a section on just research that we're doing and news articles and things like that. Yeah, and that's a great resource for for understanding more about transparency and about the precautionary principle, right? Yeah. Um, and then, um, so this site is, is has very valuable and key information, so it must be hard to get into and must be expensive to access, <laughs> right? Yeah, well, if you could think of <laughs> free is expensive to access, <laughs> then yeah, it is. And when we were doing this and coming up with a list of 25, 25 materials, we thought, all right, we're a big company. We do a lot of buildings, but we're not going to change manufacturers and we're not going to change products if it's just left to Perkins and Will. So why don't we put it out there as something that everybody can use? I mean, it's not a marketing advantage. It's a, it's a serious effort that we want to be able to, to have manufacturers come to. And are these manufacturers of these products, are they listening? Are they uh, taking heed of this and trying to change some of the products where they are healthier? A, a lot of them really are, and it's pretty amazing to watch. At first, we got a lot of pushback from manufacturers because, you know, they've got products, they've invested a lot of money in developing these products and selling these products, and now you've got a firm saying, we don't want to use them. So, 
you know, of course it's pretty logical that they were going to push back, but then some of the, the savvier manufacturers are saying, wow, this is a growing thing, and if people are really going to make their decision based on, on health impacts and, and on me telling what's in my products, then I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's important. I think the whole world is interested in being more healthy than we were uh, many years ago. So, so if a listener or a viewer is planning, designing, or building out office space, or maybe they're building a new facility right now, how might they use the precautionary list? I would say to figure out what's important to you or to your client. So for instance, if you've got a client with allergies or with asthma, then you could go to the precautionary list and search materials based on that health impact. So click on asthma, click on you know allergy triggers, asthma triggers, and it shows you a whole list of materials or substances that are known to trigger those. Then you can link it to actually the products that you're specifying. And for architects or designers, it actually links to the specifications section. So you know you can find out what's in wood preservatives or what's in plastics or furniture or any of that kind of stuff. And how about finding alternative products? We have l suggestions for alternative products, not manufacturers, and it's not like a red list where we're blackballing anybody or, or saying don't use that product or don't, don't buy from that manufacturer. What we're really trying to do is say, here's a substance, generally it's found to be bad and here's a healthier alternative. Yeah, well I urge you out there, if you're watching or listening to this show, to go to this site, it's, it's very interesting. All the tools and resources and information there may surprise you what's there. And uh, the website is transparency.perkinswill.com. So make sure you check it out. All right, we're going to take a short break. More on sustainability for health and profit in just a moment. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you in part by RealCrowd. RealCrowd lets you invest directly into shares of cash-flowing real estate with low investment minimums and the ease of investing online. Visit realcrowd.com slash radio. That's realcrowd.com slash radio. Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. You know, you're invited to send us commercial real estate related questions. Just send them to info, I N F O, at CREshow.com. Each business day, I answer a question on video, and we post it to the Twitter account, Ask Michael Bull, and to the YouTube channel, Commercial Real Estate Show. Today, our show is called Sustainability for Health and Profit, and we're talking with Paula McAvoy with Perkins and & Will. And uh, Paula, we're talking about the website, transparency.perkinswill.com, and there's a precautionary list of materials there. What are some of the products there that are most concerned to people? For me, I think the substances that are most are of most concern are the ones that either bioaccumulate they build up in people after exposure to them, or they are um, endocrine disruptors, and they mimic hormones. So they can cause all sorts of genetic and, and physical um, difficulties in children, in unborn children, in your grandchildren. They can get passed along from generation to generation. So that's what's wrong with me, I guess. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the interesting things, though, is that there have been studies that have come out lately that show that, for instance, some of the plastics, like we were talking about with the baby bottles, mm -hmm. virtually every child born already has exposure to some of these plastics that are in the environment right now. So across the board a child is already born having these toxins in their system and how about products that are uh, maybe in our office space today that what, what's of most concern most concern if you're in a place all day long then you would want to stick to things that don't off gas because that new building smell is generally not a good thing so things with low VOC or no VOCs, some of the preservatives in wood, making sure that there's not formaldehyde in wood. And then again, looking at the plastics and the type of materials that you're buying. So, you know, if you're, for instance, if you're sitting at a desk that's a plastic surface, you're touching that and it's, it's entering your bloodstream through your skin. Mm -hmm. So those are things that we need to be more careful about. Interesting. And one of the sections there is news, media, and additional research. What are some of the resources our listeners might find there interesting? 
We try to update that. I think it's going to have a major update coming pretty soon. Um, but there, it's research papers that we've put out. So there's a white paper, for instance, on use of fly ash in concrete and whether or not the, the substances found in fly ash could actually be more harmful than good. Um, news tips, things to ask when you're going shopping, sorts things like that. And uh, tell our listeners what fly ash is. Fly ash is a, a byproduct of coal burning power plants. So as the heat and the ash goes up the, the exhaust in a power plant, it accumulates around the chimney, the exhaust, and frequently they have to clean that out and then they store it in a large pit or a pond or something. Um, and we're finding that it's a replacement for cement and some concrete. Oh, interesting. What might surprise people at the site? That when you go to the site, it looks incredibly complicated because there's a whole list, like the precautionary list, of things that look like chemical names and substances that you've probably never heard of and, you know, polyvinyls and all sorts of things like that. But if you just focus on what's important to you, then it becomes much easier to navigate and, and clearer. If you focus on a health issue or the specs section, you know, the specification section, then it all starts falling into place. That's a good point. But that happened to me when I was there, and I looked at it and said, wait, wait, this is over right. my head. Then, well, let me key in on something interesting. I found it. Closing tip for our listeners? The closing tip would be if they're not telling you what's in it, you probably don't want it. So <laughs> ask when you're shopping and when you're specifying and talking to manufacturers. Ask them what's in their product. If they don't know, ask them to find out what's in their products. Good tip, Paula. Thanks for joining us today. Happy to be here. Thanks, Michael. If you'd like more information from Paula and that website, it's transparency.perkinswill.com. Well, i got a question for you as a listener. Can you join us next week? Well, I hope so. Uh, we're going to have some great shows coming up, include updates on all the major commercial real estate sectors. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Michael Bull. Until next week, be sure that you always lead, learn, and laugh, and join us for the Commercial Real Estate Show. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Florida International University, Real Crowd, and Bull Realty Commercial Brokerage, a great place to do business. For more information on these companies or to access additional podcasts, videos, or blogs, visit commercialrealestateshow.com.